Fuck! Told me the fuck is a CPA. Killing myself for a CPA. My dad did the same, never came to my games, but he gave me a ring so I couldn't complain. Or 20 something to Sally May. Can't see the point, let me clean my friends. Squinting my eyes, I made 80k. Told me the fuck is a CPA. Told me the fuck is a CPA. The CPA stands for Cruel Punishment for Accountants. Corporate predatory assault. A terrible update on the punishment of Cepheus. Cock pussy ass because it won't stop fucking. In 1887, 31 middle-aged white men created the domestic terrorist organization known as the American Association of Public Accountants to define the moral standards for the accounting industry in a bid to be what I can only assume is the most boring and mundane type of secret ball in human history. Renamed several times over the years, the organization has been known as the American Institute of Certified Public Accountant since 1957. The ICPA started offering the uniform CPA exam to state accounting boards around the country in 1917. And by 1952, all 50 states have started using the AICPA's CPA exam instead of their own state board CPA exam. Yes, those who earn the CPA credential distinguish themselves by signaling dedication, knowledge, and skill. This is due to the heavy time commitment, memorization, and critical thinking involved across three writing portions, 28 simulations, and 276 multiple choice questions that make up the CPA exam. And I, Fucking took it. This is my story. Uh, fuck. Oh my god, a 73. Fuck me. 1,066 days. I've been going through something. Three years. I've been going through something. The uniform CPA exam consists of, you guessed it, not two, not three, but four, count them four, exams that all take about four hours each. You have 18 months from passing the first one to defeat the other three heads of P.W. Severus. Severus? Sirius? The, the dog from Harry Potter or some shit. What the fuck? The exams in decreasing order of fuck you energy are how to lose friends and gain assurance. The far exam or who wants to be a millionaire with a mild substance abuse issue. Death is taxes and B, C, where the B stands for baby because no one really cares about this unless a woman is trying to kill it. Oh, and most importantly, in order to pass a section of the CPA, a candidate must receive a score of 75 on that particular section. I have that tatted inside of my eyelids and on the outside of my force. But what does the number 75 actually represent? Uh, the 75 question must like Reddit gets a little sus if you Stay on it for too long. <clears throat> yes, um, Father, what was that verse about temptation that you gave earlier at the service? According to NASBA, the National Association of State Boards of Accountancy, the score represents the overall performance on an exam section. The score being reported on a numeric scale from zero to 99, with 75 being the passing score. Okay, cool, so that just means you need to get 75% of the questions right, right? Ah, uh ah! -uh. No, because you know, that would make sense. It's the, the passing score is set at 75. Now that's a scaled score, and you may be familiar with scale, scaled scores and other exams that you take. So what that means is it's not a raw score. It's not a raw score. It's not the number of questions you got right. It's not the percentage of questions you got right. We set a scaled score so test scores have a consistent meaning over time and across test sections. And what that means is that if you think about what the CPA is, it's it's like I said before, it's it's a cabal who other banks and like government officials trust to say, hey, this person is good at keeping books. This person is trustworthy. You can you can let them touch your, touch your money however you want it, you know? So the exam isn't so much about you need to know 75% of like the body of, a, of accounting because it's, it's always changing. It's more an exam uh, that, it's a vibe check. It's a, it's a vibe check, guys. We've taken the level of performance established by the Board of Examiners to indicate passing performance, and we set it at a scale point of 75 on a scale of zero to 99. Hey guys, editing tile here. Uh, Kevin couldn't do this because I've been taking way too damn long on this video, but I really want to drive this point home that this 
ambiguous nature of the 75 is what in large part makes the exam really, really hard. You're not only trying to do your best against, you know, just straight memorization of facts, but you need to make sure you memorize the right facts that you're going to be presented at the exam. So what I want to, I guess, make clear in this section is perhaps my biggest source of confusion with the CPA exam is what that 75 actually represents. At, b b when I first started thinking about doing this video, it was just going to be called, what is a 75? This idea that the 75 is not just just getting a straight amount of questions correct, nor is it actually like a curved score. It's a set of knowledge that the board of examiners kind of create by themselves. Uh, obviously, you know, to give credit to them, they do um, like check the pulse <laughs> of the industry and ask industry professionals, hey, like, what do you think today's first year uh, associates need to know in the field? Uh, but that is completely secret. That is something that we're not privy to, that we're not allowed to know. Even these big uh, textbook providers have to go to confidential meetings with the AICPA when they discover test materials because they want to keep on, they, they want to hold on to that uh, monopoly of, of information, I guess you could call it, uh, in order to make the tests as fair as possible. Inevitably, it felt like many times I was kind of studying and hoping and praying that this quarter or this month or this exam, the test examiners just like wanted to test things that I happened to know better. And not necessarily because I didn't know enough of all the rest of the accounting, but it's because, well, they wanted me to know enough of this accounting this time around. So what I'm really trying to say is that what makes this exam difficult, I don't, I'm not even going to say like particularly difficult, but just difficult in its own system is that the 75 is uh, literally just a declaration from the board of examiners. Uh, and it is supposed to represent like a 75 is a person who is average is an average CPA doing averagely at their job. You should know this amount of stuff. What that is, we don't know. The CPA exam on average takes about 400 hours of studying about 80 to 100 hours for each exam. That's the equivalent of beating the entirety of Elden Ring three times. Playing Tomb Raider 2013 20 times through for the plot, of course. Sitting down and not leaving your seat until you've seen the end credits of Shaq Fu, the 1994 Game Boy game where you, as Shaq, use your lightning fast cherry can and other martial art techniques to prevail over six intensely evil warriors in the enforcement of justice 160 times. For this reason, many CPA candidates attempt to pass all four exams in the summer after they earn their 150 credits, giving up that entire summer before they begin the professional lives in order to get it over with. But not everyone does that. Not everybody can do that. Some of us are working full time at a 60 hour a week job that pays us less than McDonald's. Some of us have kids or spouses. Wouldn't let that shit happen to me though. Some niggas would rather use that summer to live their life because in the back of their head, they kind of know once they start working, working, they would never have this type of free time again. And Drake taught them that you literally only live once. So if you were a nigga that you deserve to live twice. And so it goes, it can take multiple years to pass the entire exam. I knew a manager that confided in me after I failed my audit exam for the second time while working as an auditor, no less, that it took her three years to pass the entire exam because get this, she kept failing audit. Bro, fuck audit. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. What? Pause. But she kept going and she eventually became a CPA. This is what psychologists and high school basketball coaches call grit. And maybe that's what the exam is really testing, what a 75 really represents. I want to emphasize that there are good and valuable jobs that CPAs do, especially in public accounting. The people who sign off on the financial health of corporations like Amazon and Netflix, who are theoretically supposed to be keeping them accountable, are required to be CPAs. Earning a CPA license demonstrates a commitment to the profession and often highlights potential candidates for leadership and management positions. They are respected and admired by their peers and their clients in the business world. To the general population, CPAs are often viewed as elite group of professionals. My issue is that we respect CPAs not because we think the exam is a useful indicator to that end, but because we understand that the exam is difficult and that makes them more trustworthy to us. I don't know. That just fucks me up a little bit. Am I am I crazy for that? Like, let me know. I feel, am I just being, am I overthinking? Am I being too weird about it? My dad is a CPA and he's a big reason why I pursued both my certification and began working in accounting generally. Not because I particularly liked numbers or getting away with tax fraud, but because my childhood financially was fine. 
I never went hungry. My house had an in-ground pool from before all the white people left. And most importantly, I felt safe, relatively. My father was a role model for what a good man was supposed to be, bare minimum. And he was a certified public accountant who drove a Beamer and owned the Gucci watch and only worked until 2 a.m. some of the time. So to the rest of my lower middle class, all black neighborhood, my dad with his wife, three kids and three quarters of a white pig offense were the image of black excellence. And to me, having a CPA was key to that image. The CPA exam itself is dumb and no one really thinks it's an indicator of workplace performance, but it is proof that you can do a hard thing, that you are willing to give something up, whether it be time, enjoyment, money, in order to be part of a special group. And I don't know, something about that speaks to the immigrant child in me. And that's why I always describe the CPA as a great example of white collar hazing, a necessary evil to join the club of comfort and employer match 401ks. Because the purpose of the circus is clout, baby. You did it. You did the hard thing. And this America where we like it hard. All right, awkward transition, but picture an accountant. Now picture a rich accountant. Now why wasn't either of them black? And if one was black, you know which one wasn't. Those with a CPA earn 25% more on average than non-CPA accountants. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, an accountant's salary on average can be more than 70000 but an average CPA salary ranges from 119000 all the way to 150000 These individuals usually move into executive positions such as controllers or chief financial officers, that one guy from succession. But you don't necessarily need to have a CPA in order to be a controller or a CFO. It all goes back to the clout thing. If you have a CPA, you're going to beat out a person who doesn't because you did a hard thing, meaning you have more job freedom in general, so they tend to go for higher positions because duh why not however a disparity exists among the demographic of cpa members specifically as it relates to class and gender uh and we can't forget race in that mixture as well as it can't be separated from either category uh because ooh, what a surprise who knew between 1976 and 2005, 70 percent of CPAs were either middle or upper class, and nearly half of all CPA candidates belong to an upper middle class white socioeconomic background. It's easy to see why. Let me expose myself. In total, I took 16 exams to pass all four sections of the CPA due to the following reasons. I'm not that good at memory recall. I'm really not that good at math. Maybe I overslept an exam or two, but it was not my fault. That was my alarm clock's fault. And my car ran out of gas once. True story. Um, I tried to go to a car dealership because I don't know. I thought if there's one place that might have gas, it'll probably be where all the cars are. Um, they informed me no. And perhaps most importantly, I had to pass two exams twice because their credits had expired before I was able to pass all four in the same 18 month framework, if you remember from the beginning of the video. I also just didn't have a lot of motivation after March 2020 for obvious reasons. Each time I scheduled an individual exam, I had to pay a $20 processing fee to my state accountancy board in order to obtain what's called a payment coupon. Basically a pass to say that I'm ready to take one of the four exams, tax, audit, whatever. Then I took this payment coupon to the NASBA website where I could get an NTS or a notice to schedule. Basically, a pass to say I'm ready to take one of the four exams, tax, audit, whatever. But this time, it's $209 for the opportunity. Wait, $209. Sorry, that's my bad. Those are 2019 numbers. This is now $226. So all total, I've spent $320 on payment coupons, over $3,500 on notice this is schedule, and over $1,600 over two years via the subscription service uh, Ninja CPA, which I call kind of like a blue collar Becker. Um, I actually highly recommend it if you know, you're know you not lucky enough to be able to have access to Becker, which can cost upward of $3,000 unless you're lucky enough to have your employer buy it for you, which is really only exclusive to maybe like some of the top firms for the most part. Um, I, I, I like Ninja. It's for if you want to get a CPA, but you really didn't do that well in your intermediate classes, <laughs> like you really weren't paying attention to accounting, because they're just like, okay, listen, we're going to tell you the stuff you need to pass the exam, know this stuff, pass the exam. So right there, I'm already spending thousands of dollars in order just to have the ability uh, to have the chance to take this exam. Uh, but then once we also roll in the cost of having the 150 credits, which uh, in the place where I'm trying to get licensed in Virginia is required for you to even be eligible to get a CPA, um, that is not cheap to get 150 credits. It's basically a bachelor's and a master's. Uh, and if I add the 27K in student loan debt that I had to get in order to get uh, both my bachelor's and my master's in five years, that brings the total price tag to $32,420 approximately, which is 
yeah, blaze it. Just burn it all down. To its credit, although the AICPA membership is predominated by individuals from wealthier socioeconomic backgrounds, 20% of AICPA members were lower class between the years of 1976 and 2005. But this is changing as now over half, 50 to 60% of all hirings by CPA firms were women between uh, 2001 and, and 2010. Only 1% of CPAs are still black, uh, but progress, I guess. Overall, this indicates that the CPA distinction is not as exclusionary as it has been in the past, and that it, in fact, can provide upward social and economic mobility if you can afford it. So the CPA is much like the SAT. It, it's pay to play, but it also pays to play. You get me? So the score for my final CPA test has come out. Uh... And uh, we're gonna go check it now. So why did I do this? And when I say this, I mean not only why did I take this godforsaken exam, I also mean why did I make this cursed video? A lot of CPA exam YouTubers, which is a fascinating YouTube niche to say the least, talk often about having a strong why, a principal purpose pushing you to conquer this beast. Because otherwise, studying for 400 hours for four exams across 18 months is not only humanly impossible, but possibly a violation of several Geneva Conventions. For some, it's their families. For others, it's the promise of super yachts and Tesla license plates that say socks to be you. But for me, well, I have trouble conceptualizing the future. <laughs> to be fair, also, I have, I have issues remembering the past. And to be honest, I, I also can't really say in the present. So maybe I'm just fucked, holy. What I'm trying to say is that I don't think I had a necessarily like super duper strong why for doing this. Uh, at the end of the day, it was just something I knew I needed to make my degree work. And um, I kept kind of just pushing along with that objective in mind day in and day out. And maybe that's why I wasn't passing the exams at first, honestly. Uh, maybe having a good strong motivation as to why you are doing what you're doing leads to a more consistent result however as someone with adhd motivation is not necessarily one of my strongest points to be honest i felt more motivated once i decided that i was gonna make the test like my arrival when it became much more a thing of uh, a personal vendetta <laughs> that i had with this exam, then um, it, it, then it became anything about, you know, being able to make more money or having more job security. But that certainly was a part of it as well. So I won't lie, like my why being I need this exam because I was told that I need it isn't the greatest why. And I'm not ashamed of that. In fact, I'm proud of it because even though my why isn't the biggest, size doesn't matter. Skills do, grit do. Scooby-Doo. The logistical reason of getting my CPA was that job security, was having a safety blanket, uh, an asset that is not unimportant to me as a late millennial who entire happiness hinges on playing the game YouTube Superstar. But at this point, I feel like my personal reason is this video? Because doing this hard thing for me has given me the mental support to do other hard things. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. I understand that I, I, I'm not a succeed on the first try, I'm not a succeed on the second try type of guy. Um, and th the way that I operate throughout the world is often through a sort of brute force, kind of like persistent sort of nature that makes it so like, you know, I will just keep going at it until I get what I want because if I really want something, like I have to go get it. There are times in my life where I'm really hard on myself and I say like, well, I'm lazy or I'm unmotivated or I don't have what it takes to do any of these grand, important life affirming things that I wanna do in my life. And I say, you know, who am I? Like how selfish, how narcissistic must I be to think that, uh, you, you know, I could provide something of value to this world. And I can. <laughs> Anywhere you said, anywhere you said, anywhere. 
fucking passed. I fucking passed. Whew. I'm a CPA. I can, I can do it. I can do hard things. I can do difficult tasks if I, if, if, if it aligns with, if, because I want to do it. I can do difficult things because I want to do it. And that's something I really did want to prove to myself. Um, and that's something that I'm proud to have accomplished because it means for the things that I, the actual things that I want to do now, I don't think anyone is going to be able to tell me that I can't work hard enough to do it because I now know the feeling of doing a really, really difficult thing for myself and I'm alive at the end. So if I can do this for a thing that I only partially like, imagine me when I really, really like doing something. Jeez. And that's also, and so that's why I made the video as visual evidence of me doing a thing that I said I was going to do as counterpoint to the popular rumor in my head that I'm not cut out to do the goals that I've ascribed myself towards. As a fleeting sign to someone who thinks like me or looks like me or feels like I did when I kept putting so many late hours into a task that felt so utterly out of my reach. You can do it. You're capable enough to do it. You are loved enough to do it. You are loved enough even if you quit, so do it because you want to do it. Because you can. Because you can do anything. And so much, so much more. And so I know you're probably wondering, like I did, all right, cool guy, you got the CPA, you did the thing, you got what you wanted, what's next, big guy, what's next? Well, I don't know. Plaque would look kind of cool there.